Punta Culebra, or Snake Point in English, is run by the Smithsonian Institute. It's a small island off the Amador Causeway. Incidentally, the Amador is named after Panama's first president. It's one of the must-sees if you're into nature and in the city. I call it one of the three green spots of the city where you can see nature in its own environment. As you can see here, there's various tanks, an aquarium, and you can see sea life from either side of the canal on display here, as well as here you can see perezosos, meaning lazies in Spanish, sloths up there in the trees, two of them there. The island's fairly small, it's an easy walk around the island, and you could probably spend about three to four hours there if you take your time, but it's definitely doable in two hours if you wanted to take things quickly. Remember to bring your identification if you're a senior or you're a resident of Panama as the price is a lot lower than being a foreigner. This island, as you go down the causeway, you'll find it on the right hand side and that's on the canal side and it offers beautiful, unique vistas, unspoiled vistas of the canal that you just won't get anywhere else. Because even if you go to the other side where it's all nature, you'll be facing all the man-made things like the Amador and the city. For anyone interested in the history of Panama, the canal zone and the canal itself and military history, on this island you'll be able to see the bunker and the rail tracks and uh, installations that the US military made for protection of the canal during the time that this was in the canal zone. And this was extremely important. And here at the mouth of the canal there were various defences. Some of them were moved by train, some large artillery was moved by train on the rails that you'll still see and you'll also see the entrance to a bunker from that era too. So as you look around there's an added dimension with the history of the site and the clues which hint at its past. The island is fairly flat, easy walking. I would suggest you bring a litre of liquids. One of the main attractions is how easy it is to see the wildlife here because it's not a vast expanse that you have to just hope to find the needle in a haystack kind of situation. It's the only place in or near the city where you're virtually guaranteed to see a sloth, an iguana and other animals in the wild face to face, very close quarter. And you can do so without trekking, it's just so easy, it's almost cheating. You can spot most wildlife pretty easily and the staff there will point out the iguana or the perezozos, the sloths to you if you do ask them because they usually know where they are. Now I did mention this is one of the three green spots, the nature spots of Panama City. The other two also feature in my videos. One is Cerro Ancon and the other is the Parque Metropolitano, Metropolitan Park and Cerro Ancon Hill where I'd say there's absolutely no doubt that you get the best views of sunsets and sunrises over the canal, Panama City and Casco Viejo from the different viewing platforms on different sides of the top of the hill there. I'll put links to those below the video so you can check them out also. But those are the three nature must-sees if you're in the city and you're a nature lover. You can get to the Amador easily by bus. There's a bus that goes from Oldbrook Terminal and that's the national transport hub. It's the terminal for the city metro buses and the metro subway system. You can also get there by car and there's a car park on site too. Now, as I said, it's pretty easy going. You could even do this in flip flops, but I would recommend bringing a umbrella to shelter you from the sun. If it's like this cloudy overcast, you can still get scorched by the rays and if there's any drizzle you can also use it for cover so it just saves messing around with sunscreen or other types of clothing that's my one of my best tips for panama overall in fact is to always carry a compact umbrella just save so much time messing about expense and mess with sunscreen and other things and you'll see many locals in the streets around panama using them just for these reasons now here you see a pretty large iguana and I've never had any issues with them being aggressive but they are known to snap their tail so do be careful and uh, don't get too close for their comfort. There is a little bit of tropical dry forest on Punta Culebra and it's very easy to walk around. You may not see much besides birds unless you look extremely carefully 
I find in tropical forests the camouflage is such high level that you really need to take your time and have a, a look in detail to find anything. It's very small but uh, again it's advantageous if you've got kids or you're just wanting a quick visit and to nip around quickly and get a lot of things done in a short time but see some things which are fairly unique and um, if you're wanting to explore a much larger dry tropical forest there is one in Playa Coronado which is between one and two hours bus ride or car ride depending what time of day what day of the week along the coast to the west and I have a couple of videos on that in my Panama nature playlist which you can see the different types of animals and insects there now mentioned four places where you can spot wildlife one of them being out of the city but if you do want to try and find more wildlife in the city try this into Costera you'll be surprised what you can find there if you take your time